is up everybody golden yogi here and you are tuning into the channel with the golden perspective today we are going to take another look at this week's on-chain newsletter from glassnode's insight it is week 28 titled pressure builds on diamond hands and before we get into that i want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already thank you to all those long-term subscribers staying loyal i appreciate it truly i do while you're down there, um, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the state of the market itself. Let me know what you think about this video and how I, anything you have, any criticism is open. All right, just please, I ask you to apply some kindness and compassion. So also let me know uh, if, you, if you liked it with a thumbs up, that'd be really sweet as well and or a down i can handle either way i really want to know what people think so while you're in the uh, down there as well in the description there are a bunch of other links to things like some things i think you'll probably be interested in if you are interested in the things i'm interested in and that is uh like decentralized uh social platforms like odyssey and twitch okay Go check those out. They're really cool to use. Yes, they don't have the adoption that bigger gigantic systems like YouTube and Instagram and Twitter have, but if we all start using these things, they will grow. All right, let's get into it. With many signals suggesting a widespread capitulation has taken place, attention now turns to whether Bitcoin is bottom forming. Here, we analyze the characteristics and duration of previous bear cycles to assess what may lie on the road ahead. Bitcoin prices continue to consolidate around the 20K range this week as the market digests the extreme downside volatility of June. Prices traded higher, opening at a weekly low of 18,971 and peaking at 22,230. With the market now down over 75% from all time high, even the strongest and longest term Bitcoin holders are feeling the pressure. Both long term holders and miners are in the spotlight this week as the market attempts to find a bottom amidst persistent macroeconomic uncertainty. In this edition, we will seek to extract and identify characteristics that have historically described the formation of Bitcoin bear market floors. This is a period of time where forced sales pass by, seller exhaustion is reached, and downside pressure begins to wane. We will explore this from a number of angles ranging from a final flesh out from even the strongest hands creating seller exhaustion, the redistribution of wealth from low to high conviction holders, a recovery of demand from both big and small entities, and a capitulation of the minor cohort which appears to be underway. First off, wealth redistribution. The prevailing bear market has numerous similarities to the late 2018 in terms of market structure, which we can see in the drawdown form of the all-time high metric. The following compares the current 2022 bear market with the 2018 bear market. First off, we have from December of 17 to March of 19, the fallout from the 17 parabolic top extended for almost 15 months, culminating in an 85% drawdown from the all-time high. The 6K area can be seen as the base level breakpoint before an ultimate capitulation where an additional 50% was wiped from the market in a course of one month. And then we have November of 21 to July of 22. <clears throat> the current bear market has experienced a peak drawdown of 75% with the 29K floor acting as a similar breakpoint base level. The latest capitulation in mid-June saw prices tumble minus 40% to $17,600 in just two weeks. The only difference was that it didn't tail off and fall off a cliff. Here it went, tried to get a relief and then started to fall and then broke down. <coughs> One of the main outcomes of a lengthy bear market is the redistribution of wealth amongst the stakeholders who remain. This progressive changing of hands can be analyzed by tracking the UTXO realized price distribution. As highlighted in week 23, past bear markets have had two distinct phases. The post all-time high phase, where short-term investors and speculators, those of low conviction, gradually come to terms with the bear market reality and exit into depreciating price trends. Moreover, some participants attempt 
counter trading the macro trending uh sorry let's read that over moreover some participants attempt counter trading the macro trend leading to multiple temporary relief rallies which is the dead cow bounce bottom discovery phase is diminishing profitability at an extended period of financial pain results in declining new demand and creates favorable conditions for ultimate capitulation first we will inspect the market from December of 17 to March to 19, and notice how price acts like a magnet, first attracting supply from top buyers towards the 6K region, and finally an enormous redistribution occurs post-capitulation into the 3K, 4K range. This describes a two-part capitulation cycle and eventual bottom formation. In the current 2022 market, we have a similar structure so far following the November 21 all-time high. We can see a similar redistribution pattern occurs around the 30k floor. Originally established in May-June of 21, over the course of May-June of this year, we can see prices trade down to the 20k region, which becomes a significant trigger point for both investor capitulation and new buyers, thus being a node for coins changing hands. Next, we have the capitulation of the diamond hands. <coughs> what are diamond hands? These are the ones who we believe have the strongest conviction. With the loss of the 30k price level, miners and long-term holders, LTHs, have come under stress as we explored in week 25. To demonstrate the ongoing capitulation of the 21-22 cycle, LTHs, we can monitor their profitability on two fronts their actualized losses, which are spending, and unrealized losses, coins held below their cost bases. The long-term holders spent output profit ratio, the LTH SOPR, is a metric which indicates the profit ratio captured by LTHs, the long-term holders, which is, so for example, a value of 2.0 means long-term holders are spending coins at a price which are two times their cost basis. Therefore, when the LTH SOPR is less than one, these players realize losses or spend coins at prices below their cost basis. The LTH SOPR is currently trading at 0.67, indicating the average long-term holder spending is spending their coins is locking in a 33% loss. Long-term holder cost basis estimates the average price long-term holders paid for their coins. Hence, as the market valuation far, falls below this LTH cost basis, this cohort, this group, can be considered to be an aggregate in aggregate loss. Similarly, long-term holders are currently underwater on average, holding an aggregate unrealized loss of minus 14%. <coughs> the following chart combines these concepts and shows intervals which satisfy both conditions, which are in green. These moments are when long-term holders are both underwater on held coins and locking in losses based on their spending. In combination, this indicates there is an increased probability that long-term holder capitulation is underway. With, these current val with, with the current value of the LTH SOPR at 0.67 as we stated before, and the LTH cost basis at 22,300, it means long-term holders are realizing an average loss of less of uh, minus 33 percent losses on each spent coin despite um, the spot prices being only six percent below their cost basis this signifies that long-term holders who acquire coins at much higher are the primary spenders at the moment and those who still hold coins from the 17 tw 2017 to 20 cycle or earlier are largely sitting tight and that's all because they group all these people into the same, they group these addresses or whatever into the same cohort or group. Transfer of losses. <coughs> Excuse me. A consequence of capitulation events is an immediate redistribution of coins to new buyers, whom are often classified as short-term holders at first. Over time, however, the dominance of long-term holders amongst the supply tends to increase as fair-weather speculators are flushed from the market. Bottom formation is often accompanied by long-term holders shouldering an increasing large proportion of the unrealized losses. In other words, for a bear market to reach an ultimate floor, the share of coins held at a loss should transfer primarily to those who are the least 
sensitive to price, and with the highest conviction. This is the result of two mechanisms. The exiting of entities with weak conviction, which we call short-term holders right now, and the gradual transfer of, coin, transfer of coins to entities with strong conviction, whom are relatively price insensitive, long-term holders. In the depths of previous bear markets, the proportion of supply that was held by LTHs and at a loss reached above 34, 34%. Meanwhile, the proportion held by short-term holders declined to just 3-4% to of the supply. <clears throat> at the moment, Short-term holders still hold 16.2% of the supply in loss, suggesting that freshly redistributed coins must now go through the process of mat maturing in the hands, maturation in the hands of higher conviction holders. This indicates that while many bottom formation signals are in place, the market still requires an element of duration and time, to, uh, time pain to establish a resilient bottom. Bitcoin investors are not out of the woods yet. The recovery of demand, both big and small. A common component of previous bear market cycles is the expulsion of Bitcoin tourists. An observation made was the standout balance growth by shrimps and whales. Following on, following on from this, we introduce a new indicator which seeks to track the relative on-chain activity of both small and large entities. Considering the historical transactional data for Bitcoin, the mean value of daily transfer volume has typically been larger than the median value. This is largely the result of there being a larger quantity of small value transactions and a smaller quantity of large value transactions. We can see this in the consistent disparity between the mean in red and the median in blue transaction USD size through Bitcoin history. Therefore, the Bitcoin on-chain transaction value distribution displays positive skewness. Skewness is the degree of asymmetry, asymmetry observed in a distribution. Positive skewness occurs when the mean is greater than the median. This indicates that there are a greater number of small value transactions than large ones. <clears throat> and the mean is greater than the median. We can use this observation to develop a macro framework to assess the comparative level of activity and demand from small and large entities. The oscillators below are constructed by taking the ratio between the 7-day moving average and the 365-day moving average of the median, which are small entities in blue, and the mean, large entities in red, <coughs> USD transaction volumes. When small entities exceed large entities, it typically suggests an influx of small size transactions and is often associated with the excitement of bull markets and greater speculation. When the indicators are increasing, it can be considered to be a signal of higher demand from the entity cohort. When the indicators are decreasing, it can be considered to be a signal of low demand from that entity cohort. What can be seen in the current market cycle is that the red curve has consistently traded above the blue curve. This indicates that the activity of large entities like institutions have been dramatically higher in retail or higher than retail, both through the bull market bull cycle and more recently during the capitulation events. Furthermore, we can see that the smaller entities remain quite active relative to past bears, but we have not yet seen a bottoming and recovering reversal yet. This is a characteristic to, the characteristic to keep an eye on to watch for expanding demand from both entity cohorts. The key takeaway from this metric is that while activity is in bottom formation territory, like the conclusive above, it has not received or has not reverted into recovery mode just yet. <clears throat> Next, minor capitulation. Finally, we will return attention to the minor cohort who often tend to become an influential source of selling pressure during late stage bear markets, as they're the only ones who have Bitcoins being produced to them on a regular basis. This is a result of the cyclical nature of their income, and the current bear market has been no exception to this trend. 
To track whether a minor capitulation is in play, we can consult a two-part model, which seeks confluence between implied income stress, the Puel multiple, and observed hash rate decline, difficulty ribbon compression. The Puel multiple tracks aggregate minor income in USD relative to the one-year average. Here we can see that presently Bitcoin miners are earning just 49% as much as their 12-month average. This implies minor income stress is likely a factor. The difficulty ribbon compression in purple, so the last one Puel multiple is going to be in uh, orange, and this one the difficulty ribbon compression in purple signals that hash rate is indeed coming offline causing protocol difficulty to fall in a statistically significant way. This is an explicit observation that ASIC rigs are being switched off due to income stress. And then in yellow, we have the minor capitulation risk, which highlights periods where both metrics signal meaningful lows and generally correlated with extreme bear market lows and an elevated risk of minor capitulation events. <clears throat> With confirmation that minor capitulation risk is a factor, we can confirm that aggregate minor balances have experienced up to 4.47 thousand BTC per month in distribution. This started primarily after the collapse of the Luna UST project. The income stress on these miners has resulted in a total distribution of 7.9 thousand BTC from their treasuries over a two month period. That said, miners have slowed their spending of late and are currently distributing from their stored treasuries at a rate of 1.35 thousand, so the 1,350 BTC per month. The duration of minor capitulation in the 2018-19 bear market was around four months, with the current cycle only having started in one month ago. Miners currently hold an approximate hold approximately 66.9 thousand BTC in aggregate in their treasuries. And thus, the next quarter is likely to remain at risk of further distribution unless coin prices recover meaningfully. In conclusion, the present market structure has many hallmarks of the later stage of a bear market, where the highest conviction cohorts, the longer, uh, the long-term holders, and the miners are 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 blah, 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 are under remarkable pressure to surrender. The volume of supply at a loss now has reached 44.7%, which is a majority of which a majority is carried by the long-term holder cohort. However, this remains at a less severe level than compared to previous bear market cycles. We also introduced a new indicator that tracks the activity level of small and large entities as a tool to map market recovery. This supports the observation that the market is well into the bear market, however, has not yet formed a confident bottom and still has work to do. Overall, the fingerprint of a widespread capitulation and extreme financial stress is certainly in place. However, there still may be a combination of both time pain duration and perhaps further downside risk to fully test investor resolve and enable the market to establish a resilient bottom. Well, what do you think? Let me know if you are someone looking over this kind of data yourself. It is quite interesting to, you know, I remember in the last bear market, we didn't really have these on-chain analysis uh, to go back to. So it's really interesting to continue to, to follow up on these, which is why I enjoy keep reading them because I'm understanding them more and more as I read them. And I hope you are too. So let me know down in the comment section what you think, and I will see you later. All right, peace.